1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses uh, 9 through 13. Uh, my pastor talks a lot about uh, great, uh, a group of people he calls great scientists. <laughs> and uh, I'll just say, <clears throat> great scientists probably won't like this sermon too much tonight. Um, but Amen. it's what the Lord's got put on my heart. Amen. Amen. Um, it's kind of an old school teaching. It's a teaching that you haven't seen around for, for many decades. Um, and I'm just three decades old. So that, and the reason I say it's, you haven't seen it for about three decades is because I haven't seen it. But it's a, uh, it's a biblical principle that I think we need to bring back. Um, it's, uh, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a principle that made me just laugh earlier when I thought about what would happen if a preacher actually went into one of these big mega churches and one of these, uh, you know, one of these power of the hour churches and preached a sermon like this, I was just wondering what would happen to these modern churches. Amen. Um, First Corinthians chapter five, I want to look at verses nine through uh, nine through 13. Verse nine says, I wrote unto you an epistle not to accompany with or not to accompany, not to accompany with fornicators. Wow. Amen. I'm going to read that again. It says, and this is Apostle Paul writing to the church uh, in Corinth. He says, I wrote unto you an epistle not to company with fornicators. Uh-oh. And wow. there are a lot of these graceologists out there that believe, you know, that once you get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, that God only sees the blood of Christ and you can do what you want to from that point forward because he loves you. And, you know, no matter what, you will never be outside of his grace and you will never, you know, you'll never get too far from him. Mm-hmm. Well, here God makes a command or excuse me, God speaks through Paul to make this uh, this, this suggestion to Christians. Amen. Mm-hmm. And he tells us to not keep company with fornicators. And when you read through this, te- well, I'm going to I'm going to follow through in this text in just a minute. Because a lot of people will say, well, that's talking about the sinner folk. And in a minute, I will show you in the scripture where this is not talking towards sinner folks. This is talking towards the people that call themselves Christians. Mm -hmm. Amen. So um, if you believe, you know, that if you're covered through grace, you can live any way you want to and that you can go to the bars and you can sleep around all you want to and you can do these things and still be sanctified, then you might want to read the scripture and just consider this for just a minute because... God gave Paul a request to Christians and said, do not keep company with fornicators. So basically saying, if you've got somebody who calls himself a Christian or a churchgoer that you know is doing having premarital affairs, that you're not supposed to even keep company with that person. Right. That's pretty bold for us to have that kind of commandment. You know, the commandment that we're supposed to just love and accept people for the way they are and just love them to death. Yeah, isn't that sweet? You know, the sad part about loving people to death is I think the church does love people to death. Sometimes we love them to eternal death. Amen. Amen. When in reality, we should love them to heaven. That's right. Amen. And love them to life. That's right. Amen. That's good. Verse 10 says, and again, he's talking about, let, let me even start with verse 9 and then go to verse 10. It says, I wrote into you an epistle not to accompany with fornicators, yet all not or yet not altogether with fornicators of the world, or even with the covetousness, or the covetous. Those people that are greedy and those people that are always chasing after something that somebody else has got. Amen? Yeah. Don't keep company with them, it says, or extortioners. Amen? Or idolaters. For then must you needs to go or needs go out of the world. Verse eleven says, But now I'm writing unto you to not keep company if any man be called a brother, be called a what? Brother. A brother, talking about our brother in Christ, a brother in the Lord. This is not talking about sinner folk. This is those who call themselves brothers and sisters and those who are supposed to be saved under the blood of Christ. He's telling us to not even have company with those that is called a brother if he be a fornicator. Okay, Uh somebody having premarital affairs. Or a covetous or an idolater. And then it goes to even more extremes. A railer or even a drunkard. Uh A drunkard. 
Mm. It mentions that in this scripture that, you know, a lot of these people believe they can go into bars and they can have themselves some drinks and they feel like they can get a little buzz and still be okay with God and still be okay going to church. And a lot of these preachers get up and talk about, well, God's forgiven you for the sins that, that you do unknowingly and the sins that you've done knowingly and the sins you're going to do in the future. And they're preaching this thing and people are going out and they're getting drunk. And the scripture tells us to not even keep company with them. That's so if right. God's telling us to not keep company with them and we're just here in the flesh and we're just here in the body and we're just Christians ourselves what would God himself think about keeping company with these same kind of individuals right. that are abusing the grace of God and they're taking the grace of God in vain and abusing it amen, amen. and not being a true representative of Christ mm -hmm. it goes on to talk about the extortioner and it says with any of these people do not even eat I just wonder today how it would be if you went into some of these modern churches or some of these mega churches and all of a sudden you started bringing in the excommunication from the church. I wonder how excommunication would really be accepted in a lot of these churches today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where when you get to doing all these little sins and like fornicating, let me tell you a, a fornication that a lot of churches are accepting today. It's called homosexuality. And in reality, homosexuality is nothing more than fornication with a with a fancier word, with a little bit of abomination behind it. Right. It's just fornication. And there are a lot of churches that are supporting all this homosexual behavior and supporting this. And the scripture says for us as Christians to not even sit down with them and eat, not even keep company with them. Amen. Yes, if they call themselves a brother and they call themselves saved Good by the blood point. of Jesus Christ, do not keep company with the fornicators. That's right. That would be somebody who's homosexual. Amen. That's committing a premarital affair. And according to the scripture, male with male can't get married and female with female can't get married. That's not marriage. Amen. Right. It's just not, it's just not tolerable. Verse 12 says, for what have I to do to judge them that are, uh, that them also that are without? Do not judge them that are, excuse me, do not ye judge them that are within. Verse 13, but them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away um, from among yourselves that wicked person. Here the scripture's telling us if we've got somebody that's, that, that calls themselves a Christian mm -hmm. and say that they've been saved by blood of Jesus Christ and their life is not showing it, that we need to shun those folks and just tell those folks, look, you know, I love you to death just like the Lord loves you, but you need to get this stuff out of your life. And if you're going to and if you're going to uh, blatantly keep just doing this stuff, I don't want to have any part of it. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. Um, you know, um, the, old, the old adage says, you know, you lay down with dogs, you get fleas. One of the reasons the church is getting such a bad name now, the church people are either doing the same things that the worldly people are doing, or they're hanging out with the same worldly people. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen too many youth come through my youth group, and I've seen adults doing the same thing as the youth do. They get in church, and they get you know, they read their Bible, and they study and pray, but they want to hang out with these people that are ungodly and that are doing ungodly things. And when people see you with those folks doing those things, what are they going to think about you, and what are they going to say about your ministry amen right it doesn't look good on your ministry it doesn't look look good amen amen and then the scripture goes on a little bit further and tells us here the, and there's a lot of people that say we shouldn't judge amen right. they say well you shouldn't judge you know <laughs> don't say not to judge well let me read verse uh, 12 and 13 again it says <clears throat> for what have i to do to judge them that are without do not you judge them that are within but them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So here it's telling us we, we, we have the right to judge those that are amongst us. If, if they're doing these bad things and if they're doing these sinful things, we're to look at them and say, look, you're doing these things. God tells me as long as you keep doing that, I can't keep company with you. So you're going to have to make a choice. Amen. Amen. And excommunicate those from our lives because if we're not careful, those things that they're participating in and those things that they, they allow will jump off onto us and whatever evil spirits they bring in with them can affect our lives and hinder us. Amen. Amen and then it goes on in the same scripture. And I like the way the scripture flows from uh, talking about the Christian brothers and sisters that are doing things they shouldn't be doing. Then it goes to talk about those who are not brothers and sisters. Amen? It says, but them that are without, God judges. And that's the scariest part of this scripture, if you ask me. The scary part about it is God judging any man. I will tell you, one of my biggest fears is God. 
I fear God because God has, has in his scripture has unfolded to me that there's going to be two eternal destinations, one being heaven, one being hell. And that I fear <coughs> hell when I read about how horrible hell is supposed to be, I fear that for my own soul, and I never want to do anything that would put myself outside of grace where I would be just put out. Not only that, I worry about my brothers and sisters. I worry about my family, my real family, not just my, my Christ family, my family in Christ. I worry about my, my, my fleshly brothers and sisters, the ones in my family, my sister that was born of my mother. Talk about my cousins and my aunts and uncles. I I worry about them finding themselves in hell. I worry about my friends finding themselves looking up from hell. Not only that, I worry about some people that I don't even know because looking at them, I don't want to find them in hell one day. Amen? Amen. I don't want them going to hell. So here it says that God will judge them. And that scares me. So if God is going to judge them, I need to go out and I need to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and let them know that there is hope that God will judge them and they need Jesus Christ in their life. And then once they get Jesus Christ in their life, they don't need to be like verses 9, 10, and 11, but they need to change their lives mm -hmm. and be, as it says, I think it's in uh, uh, chapter 6, to become a new creature in Christ. Amen? Amen. To become a new creature in Him. So with that, I'm, I want to go ahead and close um, just uh, just uh, by hitting just a, just a few more quick points real quick. I'm just going to read through these. I, as I was reading through this, the Lord just uh, put these questions in my heart said, um, if we follow these scriptures of excommunication and if we really follow these scriptures, what difference would it really make? You know? How many people would leave? And that's why a lot of people won't preach scriptures like this because they're afraid if they do preach scriptures like this, people will leave the church and they'll say, you're running people away from God. <laughs> Amen? And they're afraid of scriptures like this, but it's scripture nonetheless. But I have a few other points I want you to think about that. But what would happen if we actually did go back to the basics and did go back to scriptures like verses mm -hmm. 9, 10, and 11? Maybe then on, all brother. of a sudden people will go hiding sins. Well, Brother Lee, wait a minute now. I don't believe, I don't like what you're saying there. I don't know about that. I think people should come out, you know. I don't believe they should hide sins, and I don't believe they should keep it inside. I believe they should just come out with it. Well, I think that's a false teaching. I really do. If you've got sin in your life, I believe you should confess it to a brother or sister and get you a prayer partner. I believe you should confess it to a pastor and get some help. I believe you need to tell it to the Lord. But actually coming out with all this stuff, I don't think it's a great thing. Because as we keep coming out with this stuff and coming outwards with it, instead of us coming outward with it and somebody coming to us and saying, Look, you shouldn't be doing that stuff because that's not fitting for a Christian person. We're saying, Okay, now that you've admitted it, we're proud of you and we love you anyway. So you just keep doing it the way you're doing because we love you anyway and the more we bring it out the more we accept it and the more people we realize and you know when it was first long time ago when homosexuals come out in church they were kind of shunned in the church so many people wouldn't come out and admit it. Amen? Amen? And then people started coming out and admitting it. And everybody was like, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Well, it was a good thing when they were admitting it and coming out and trying to combat it. But then all of a sudden, when thousands of people started coming out, they're like, wait a minute now. That's a lot of people coming out and admitting this type of thing. So maybe we need to start accepting it more than condemning it. Maybe we need to accept these people more. We need, to, And all of a sudden, the sin that was an abomination according to the Scripture <coughs> is acceptable. Not only that, now we're bringing children into churches that are watching men hold hands with men and women hold hands with women Crazy. and watching them kiss on the parking lot yeah. of the church building. And when we've got a 10-year-old or a 6-year-old coming up watching this kind of stuff happening in the church parking lot, what are they thinking? They're thinking, well, God don't hate it because they do it at church. And don't we go to church to get God? So when we go to church and see them doing it, ain't that God? Don't that say that God's okay with it? And they start perverting their minds. We accept too much stuff. Amen. A lot of these sins should be hidden inside of themselves. They should be ashamed of it. Amen? They should come out and just be ashamed, or excuse me, they should be ashamed, ashamed of this of and go to a brother or sister for help. Not bring it out just to be accepted. Amen? Right. Amen. You know, I know that there is a, a big burden that gets lifted off your shoulders when you come out and confess your sins. 
I've, I've talked to my pastor, and there, there were things that I carried for years. And I came and told my pastor, and I said, Pastor, i got to get this off my back. I, I've just got to talk to you about something. I want to tell you about this. And when I told him, that made me feel so good. Yet at the same time, those things that I've told him are things that I don't necessarily need to bring out to the whole church. Because if I bring it out to the whole church, people are going to look and say, Well, Brother Lee, he's a good preacher. You know, I know Brother Lee saved, and Brother Lee, he's a street preacher. And if Brother Lee does it, Maybe I can do it too. Mm-hmm. And if Brother Lee wasn't big enough to overcome it, maybe I can give in to the temptation too. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. We should, you know, it's 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 sad that we have a church today that teaches people to not be ashamed of your sin. Yeah. That's right. Sin is a shameful thing. We should be ashamed of our sins. Amen. That's right. And sin should not be something for us to brag about. Amen. It should be something for us for us to to be uh, um, sad about. I, I know some Christians that, that that have come to know the Lord, and it's kind of funny. We sat down with them. My wife and I sat down with them the other day, and they were talking about how when they were in the world, and they were talking about when I was in the world, I did this. When I was in the world, I could drink this much, and I would drink that much, and I could I could consume this much, and I could go this many hours after drinking this, and my favorite drink was that, and my favorite drink was this, and it, it embarrassed me. I was sitting there watching my wife listen to them talking about their bar days. No, they were not giving the glory to God that God that God brought them out of that and did good in their lives. They were bragging on how horrible they were when they were in the world. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's not a conversation that needed to be. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. So in that thought, I just want you guys to just consider that, that maybe a lot of this stuff shouldn't be coming out so much as it is. And maybe we need to adopt.